Welcome to Jets Overtime presented by Duncan. We're going to dive into the NFL draft and taking me into the deep waters yeah. is my guard, Brian Baldinger. And we're joined by Leger Duzable as well. Coming up, we're going to catch up with Caroline Hendershot and Ethan Greenberg. But Baldy, over the years, mm -hmm. the number 13 spot, which the Jets own in the first round, has yielded a lot of good football players, particularly in the trenches on both sides of the football. Well, I, I think this uh, the 13th pick this year is a real sweet spot for the Jets because I believe the quarterbacks are going to get pushed up, and so some really good players, including some offensive tackles, could get pushed down. Like, I just think this is a good spot to be to find a day one starter. Deuce, it's been a lucky 13 over time. If the Jets don't go offense with the 13th overall selection, they currently own a pair of valuable second round selections, number 42 and number 43 overall. Obviously, things could change if a trade happens. Yeah, yeah, I don't see them not going on the offensive side of the ball. And like you said, a trade could potentially happen days before the draft or leading up to the draft where Aaron Rodgers is included in a package and one of those second rounders are gone. But uh, Baldy kind of talked about it. The Jets are in a really sweet spot when it comes to potentially finding a day one starter at the offensive tackle position. I believe one of the top four tackles will be there. And if not, maybe you go on the other, uh, you know, on the outside at receiver with Jackson Smith and Jigba since you lost Elijah Moore. Baldy, the Jets have a new offensive system under Nathaniel Hackett, but the expectation is a grizzled veteran will be leading the way if Aaron Rodgers eventually does come to New York. It's interesting. The Jets have a young group, but you're bringing in veterans who have familiarity with each other and the system. Well, look, I mean, it's fortuitous if Aaron Rodgers is here with Nathaniel Hackett. They had a great relationship in Green Bay. Aaron Rodgers really sold him uh, to Denver saying, look, this guy can do it all. He's great in front of the room. Uh, he really helped him in designing the offense, the play calling, the whole part. I mean, I just think the two of them together can help really install this offense to the whole team. Dudes, the Jets struck gold in last year's draft on offense with the selections of Garrett Wilson and Brees Hall. Two foundational pieces for this team. Yeah, Garrett Wilson, offensive rookie of the year. And he kind of kids with Brees Hall saying if Brees Hall never got hurt, he probably would have won offensive rookie of the year. But Garrett Wilson went over 1,100 yards with four different quarterbacks. Yeah, he can beat you at all three levels underneath with slant routes, drag routes, uh, intermediate. He's precise in his route running with dig routes and hitch routes. And then he can beat you down downtown. And then if you look at Brees Hall, right, the explosion, right? 70 plus yard uh, run and catch versus the Miami Dolphins, a 60 plus yard run versus the Denver Broncos and a 30 plus yard run with the Green Bay Packers. And I've heard he's actually looked really good. So you're looking forward to having, you know, Brees Hall bounce back and be healthy this year. But when you pair him with Garrett Wilson, you have some explosion on offense. Fans come out to MetLife Stadium on April 27th at 7 p.m. for the 2023 New York Jets draft party presented by Verizon. Watch the draft live on the field tour the locker room and enjoy games with family and friends. Download your free tickets at nyjets.com slash draft party. Coming up, Caroline Hendershot and Brian Baldinger will look at some of the top offensive line prospects and we'll dive into the world of mock drafts. Jets Overtime is presented by Duncan. The Jets run on Duncan. Welcome back to Jets Overtime. I'm Caroline Hendershot, joined by Brian Baldinger to break down some of the top offensive line prospects in this year's draft class. Okay, Baldy, let's start with offensive tackle Broderick Jones. Out of Georgia, he had the fastest 40 from all O linemen with a 497. Well, what I love is his consistent sets. Like when he sets right here, he gets to the contact point quickly because he's an elite athlete, he gets off the ball fast, and then once he gets there, he has that ability just to lock up right here. So he's in great shape at the end of the play, all right? And it's really play to play to play. I mean, he's so consistent. Like, here he is again. And you watch him, like, on this play, and it's the same thing. Like, his ability just to be able to, to get into space right here, and now he's in perfect position to lock up this defensive end. Like, I just love that right there. Like, he's in, the play's over. Like Stetson Bennett can make that play right there, get rid of the ball cleanly. He's got confidence. And Broderick Jones started 19 straight games at Georgia, 
two-time national champion. Like, he's played in the biggest games that college football has. What about Darnell Wright from Tennessee? He has experience at guard, left tackle, right tackle, so you're getting a really versatile player with him. Well, here he is. Here he is at left tackle right here. In 2021, against the national champions, the number one pick right here in Trayvon Walker. He actually knocks his hands down, and then he resets and locks out. Like, he's got elite skills at 6'5 and a half, 335 pounds, ran a five flat 40, long arms, and knows how to use them. This year, he was the right tackle for Tennessee. Started 42 straight games for the Tennessee Volunteers right now. But here he is going up against the number one pick, number one defensive player in this entire draft, and Will Anderson. And it's the same thing. Like, you watch his sets right here and his ability just to control a great power rusher. That's a great position right there. You want this, like I just want to take a screenshot of that and make it my screen. That's what it's supposed to look like right there from Darnell Wright. Like he's played guard, he's played both tackle positions. You really can plug him and play him anywhere. Right, and that's the best thing for any team to have to plug and play. So now for centers, let's look at Joe Tipman from Wisconsin. He's projected as an NFL starter. What do you see on tape from him that you like? Well, first of all, he's six foot six. Okay, he's started two straight years at Wisconsin right now. And when I watch him, his ability just to control the middle, whether it's in the run game or the pass game, like on this particular play right here, like they're going to get all this movement right here. So here he is in a great position right here, locking this up. But watch him. Once he does that and he gets the hit from the guard, he's going to come over and bounce here too. So you watch him. Now, he's basically bounced two different guys right here, giving yes. the quarterback time. Mm -hmm. Like that's what you want. You want a guy that can ping pong in the middle back and forth. But he also showed like elite skills. When I watch this right here, like he's going to come from the center position and block that end. Like when he does this, you see his movement, Caroline, his ability just to, to block the defensive end on the edge, to give the quarterback a chance right here to make this throw. Like this is what you want. Mm -hmm. So not everybody can run that protection because not everybody has a, a center that is that mobile like that. And that athletic, that's the big key yes. there. But finally, what about center John Michael Schmitz, who's a four-year starter at the University of Minnesota and the first All-American offensive lineman out of that school since 2005? Well, he could have come out of the draft last year. Mm -hmm. But when I watch him like right here, like in the run game, watch him get the movement here in the run game. This is what you want. Get the running game going right here. Like, start start the play. Get some good push right there mm -hmm. on that defensive tackle. Now the back has room to cut behind you and make that kind of a play. Now, in the middle right here, you're going to get all kinds of stunts. Like, they're going to stunt the linebacker and bring the end behind, and he's going to see it all. Like, you want your center to be able to see all of this. So when he gets this blitz coming right here, he's going to saw it off with no penetration right there. He passes it off. Now here comes the loop. The loop comes inside right here. He's going to come off of that, and now he's going to bang him too. And so now the quarterback has a chance to come out of this, to make the throw or make the run, whatever he wants to do. He can do it because John Michael Smith has kept the middle clean like that. So, Baldy, thank you so much for breaking down each of those offensive line players for us. Coming up, Eric Allen and Leger Duzable discuss skill position prospects in the 2023 draft class. Welcome back to Jets Overtime, which is presented by Duncan. With the 13th pick, almost all draft experts think the Jets are going to take a tackle. And right now, when you look at who's on the roster, the Jets have three tackles returning from injury. Dwayne Brown, Makai Becton, and Max Mitchell. Brown and Becton both entering the final year of their respective contracts. So if the Jets do in fact draft a tackle at 13 and both Brown and Becton return fully healthy, and both are projected starters, the Jets will have a good problem on their hands and a tough decision to make. Great stuff, Greens. Legit, the Jets scored huge last year with the selection of Iowa State running back, Brees Hall. What's your take on B. John Robinson, the talented standout from Texas? Yeah, EA, it's all about positional value in the NFL. And unfortunately, the running back position isn't as high on people's boards as other positions when you look at quarterback, left tackle, defensive line. Uh, but if you have a true elite running back like a Brees Hall, right, coming out of the draft, a Saquon Barkley, a Christian McCaffrey, then you take those guys early in the draft. And Bijan Robertson fits in that mold as well, as far as a guy that can break tackles, a guy that can catch the ball out of the backfield 
and have some explosion. Now, a lot of people might get after me about this EA. I actually like Jameer Gibbs a little bit better just because of the explosion that he has out of the backfield and the returnability that he brings to your team. He's a guy literally that can take a screenplay, you know, 70, 80 yards. Now, B. John Robertson can do that too. But, you know, with Jameer Gibbs, he just does it a lot quicker, right? He's more of a explosive Alvin Kamara. So to me, with the position of value, running backs kind of get pushed down. But if you truly have an elite running back that can change the game, you take them a little bit higher. All right, let's talk about quarterback dominoes. The Jets aren't looking for a young quarterback. They hold that 13th overall selection. How many quarterbacks do you think will be taken off the board before the green and white turn their card in? Yeah, yeah, I think three for sure, and possibly even four. Now, the Cardinals are in the sweet spot at the number three pick, and supposedly they've been fill filled in calls. Supposedly up to six teams have even called in to check on the number three spot. So I do believe they'll trade out of that spot. Now you look at, you know, the Tennessee Titans. Are they the team that trades up? Does the Las Vegas Raiders potentially go with the quarterback position? So I think four guys could potentially go in the first round before the Jets pick at 13. And do not be surprised if Hendon Hooker is a guy that gets in at the end of the first round. I'm not saying he'll go before pick 13, but he has a chance to go in the first round. Look at you with all your hot takes. I'm loving this. You never say never, but are young receivers not in the thinking when you bring in a veteran quarterback? This receiver group includes Quinton Johnston from TCU, of course, big body dude on the outside, Jordan Addison from USC, and Garrett Wilson's former teammate, JSN from the Buckeyes. Yeah, I know Aaron Rodgers isn't synonymous with liking to play with young, um, you know, receivers, but he's done it before, right? Devontae Adams, Jordy Nelson, Randall Cobb, who's one of his best friends. I know he had some issues last year with Romeo Dobbs and Christian Watson, but at the end of the day, your job as a GM is to put roster on your team for sustained ability. So if there's a guy, say at pick 13, top four offensive tackles are gone, and you like Quentin Johnson or you like Jackson Smith and Jigba, who I think would fit in nice with our receiving group because the Jets are looking for a slot receiver, receiver after losing Elijah Moore. Now, Garrett Wilson could play in there, but you, you would think Alan Lazard is going to play on the outside. He has some slot experience as well. But Jackson Smith and Jigba has done a lot of damage in college in the slot. I think he would be a really good fit to pair with Alan Lazard and Garrett Wilson on the outside if he's there at 13 and the top four offensive tackles are off the board for the Jets. It feels like we're just getting started here on Jets Overtime. Coming up, it's a time to take a look at some mock draft selections. The Jets are ready to take flight, and you can be there for every game this season. Lock in your season tickets to experience the action and energy of a Jets game day at MetLife Stadium. You'll also get exclusive season ticket holder benefits you can't find anywhere else. For more information, visit nyjets.com slash season tickets. Welcome back into Jets Overtime. We're going to take a look at some mock drafts, starting with ESPN Todd McShay and Mel Kuyper Juniors. We're going to start with number 13, where they both picked tackles. Yeah, that's right, Caroline. Tackle to the Jets at 13, very popular to do. And we heard Baldy break down Broderick Jones. So let's talk about Paris Johnson, Todd McShay's selection to the Jets at 13. Johnson started 26 games for Ohio State, 13 at right guard in 2021, 13 at left tackle in 2022. So very versatile. He was a consensus first team All-American this past season and a very long player. And another top tackle prospect that I think we should mention, Northwestern's Peter Skaronsky. He's been holding down the fort at left tackle since day one on college campus. That's three seasons there, but a lot of people think that he might be better suited at the pro level on the inside. And you take a look at this comparison. Jets fans obviously very familiar with Elijah Vera Tucker. Similar trajectory. ABT played left tackle his final year at USC. Kicks on the inside with the Jets. Look at this. Skaronsky's heavier by five pounds, same height, longer arm length, bigger hand size, and longer wingspan. The reason why I want to bring this up is because we saw AVT play tackle for a couple games last season for the Jets. So just want to point out Skaronsky can do it. See, I like seeing it laid out like that because Jets fans who are very familiar with AVT have a good comparison to go by. Now let's look at the second round where they selected centers for the Jets. Yeah, it seems like Mel Kuyper and Todd McShay sharing a brain here, at least by position. And Joe Tippmann is the pick in both of these. John Michael Schmitz, another center, the Minnesota center, popular to the Jets in the second round. But Mel Kuyper's first pick in round two caught my eye. That's tight end Luke Musgrave, and here's why. 
you take a look at the Jets' tight end room, it's deep. Tyler Conklin, CJ Uzama, Jeremy Ruckert, Kenny Yaboa, but this is considered one of the most talented tight end classes, and the Athletics' Dane Brugler said Musgrave, quote, runs like a gazelle and blocks with outstanding body control and leverage to be a physical edge setter. This seems to be like the best is yet to come for Musgrave, who has a very interesting athletic background, skiing, track and lacrosse. Okay, so he's a real athlete, and if Dane is saying that about him, I like him because that's the biggest compliment in my book. Do you think there's any other offensive positions that you could see the Jets drafting that we haven't covered? Yeah, well, I wouldn't be surprised by any other positions, but I'm really looking at wide receiver because on paper, the Jets are in a good spot but they were in on Odell Beckham Jr. until he signed with the Ravens. And wide receivers, kind of like ice cream flavors, just depends what you're in the mood for. If you want your big body receiver, you're looking at Quinton Johnson out of TCU at 6'2", 208 pounds. You want speed, go to Tennessee for Jalen Hyatt, 4'4 speed at six feet tall. USC's Jordan Addison, great route runner. And we have to mention Jackson Smith and Jigba, the Ohio State Buckeye, former teammate of Garrett Wilson debatably the most complete receiver of the bunch. Well, I love the analogy because I love ice cream. So there's a lot of options. It's going to be interesting to see how it all shakes out on draft night. Thanks, Ethan and Caroline. Baldy, when I look at this tight end position, oh. it's a fascinating group led by Michael Mayer, Notre Dame, and Dalton Kincaid out of Utah. It's probably the deepest tight end class we've had in a long time, including Darnell Washington, Sam Laporta. You could go through the list of guys. Um, but it is, it's a, it's a deep group and it's, you have whatever you want. If you want a, a true Y like Michael Mayer, inline blocker, good receiver, you could do that. Dalton Kincaid is a, is a flex tight end, runs routes like a wide receiver. You're going to have some great choices in this draft. So dudes, Baldy might have stole your thunder there offensively. Where is the best value in the draft and where do you see the most depth? Yeah, Baldy just said it, right? Tight end position, there's the most depth in this draft and the best positional value, right? There's probably going to be one, maybe two guys taken in the first round. I got up to five guys going in the second round and then in round three or four, honestly, yeah, you're probably gonna find starters in round three or four at the tight end position. The thing that really jumps off to you right away is just the size, the stature of these tight ends. A lot of these guys are six foot five and bigger. Baldy talked about it. There's different types of tight ends. You have the flex guy and Dalton Kincaid and then Darnell Washington. You can put him, you know, you can flex him out. You can put him in line, the best blocking tight end in this draft. Michael My uh, Mayer can do it all. So there's great depth at this tight end position. And you'll probably find starters in round three or four. Baldy, when you look at the Jets' offense, what are their most immediate needs? Well, I think they have to solidify the offensive line. I mean, because of injuries and other issues, like they've never been able to just put five up there together. The best teams, Kansas City wins the Super Bowl. They literally lined up the starting five every single week throughout the season, including Super Bowl Sunday. They've got to get their offensive line fixed. And then, look, anything you can do to add point scores to your offense, because that's what this whole league is about now. Whether it's a tight end, receiver, you add those wherever you can find them. Dudes, the Jets have a new offensive coordinator, Nathaniel Hackett. Potentially a Hall of Fame quarterback in Aaron Rodgers if a trade does happen. Two huge pieces right there. Name your favorite offensive player in this class right now. Ooh, I would have to say Jameer Gibbs, honestly, and not that the Jets are in need of a running back. Potentially, they could go running back. I just don't think they'll go high with the running back pick. Um, a guy that's explosive. To me, he's a more explosive Alvin Kamara. Guy that has contact balance, home run threat every time he touches the ball, runs in between the tackles. But in that zone scheme, I think he could be really dangerous in the NFL. Wow. Would Gibbs be a good fit here? Well, of course he would. I mean, look, I... I Nothing against Bam Knight or anybody else and Brees Hall coming back from that injury, but everybody needs a running back committee, whether it's two guys or three guys in this league right now. No one guy can do it all by himself anymore. That's all we have time for tonight, unfortunately. Thanks for watching another great installment of Jets Overtime. Check us out next week, Saturday night, because we're going to flip it to the defensive side of the ball.